Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member Grijalva. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I'd like to consider, or I'd like to thank the committee. You guys are considering HR 716, which is a really important uh, bill to my neck of the woods. It's it's got a pretty innocuous title. It's a land conveyance of the Pearson Air Museum and surrounding land from the National Park Service to the city of Vancouver, Washington. Here's what this bill is not. It is not an ideological driven bill attacking the Park Service, federal ownership of land, the administration, or the preservation of history. That is not what this bill is. In fact, it's the opposite. The bill is designed to maintain the quality and level of management that has made this site nationally uh, renowned an example of public of public private partnership and community access for almost the last 20 years. The Fort Vancouver National Historic Reserve was established uh, in the Omnibus Parks and Public Lands Management Act of 1996. Bordered by freeways and airport, a busy rail line, this, this reserve includes seven acre complex described in the bill on which the Pearson Air Museum is located. For all intents and purposes, the caretaker and the manager of the museum has been the nonprofit Fort Vancouver National Trust. It has raised virtually all of the funds privately, from, mostly from my community, for the museum's upkeep, which totals nearly $10 million. Until the last month, the museum was filled with privately owned planes that highlighted the rich history of aviation in southwest Washington. It's also housed countless education programs as one of the region's most popular venues and has hosted more than 100 community events each year. Uh, the shining example, this shining example of a well-maintained community treasure contrasts sharply with the shell of a museum that now sits on the Fort Vancouver land. In the last year since I became involved in this unfortunate situation, our community has watched their access to this venue disappear. Over a period of a few months, the National Park Service unilaterally began denying local community events, a charity concert to benefit military veterans, an annual all-church picnic, a youth soccer fair among them. I struggle to describe the Park Service's approach as anything but anti-public. Over the last year, my staff and I organized and attended countless meetings with staff from every level of the Park Service, from Director John Jarvis uh, to the local level. And despite these talks last month, the Park Service decided to terminate a 30-year cooperative management agreement. When I say sudden, the Park Service sent a letter to the Trust, once its partner, demanding the immediate handover of the museum's alarm code and keys in a 24-hour turnaround. This situation this is a situation Congress never intended. When the Park Service ended the agreement, the museum transferred, transformed into something completely unrecognizable by our community. Um, it's been well documented on, a cover, on, co on cover after cover of my district's uh, largest newspaper. At the owner's request, the contents were removed and the educational classes were either moved or canceled. And for weeks, the Aviation Museum sat empty and it now ho houses an old sailboat and a covered wagon. Perhaps the most concerning is that it now appears that the Park Service was intending to take sole control of the museum. An internal Park Service document unearthed by the Vancouver Columbian newspaper through a FOIA request suggests that the Park Service was planning this takeover as early as 2009. In the document I've given to the committee and staff uh, will submit for the record, the Park Service refers to the eventual ownership and management of the museum and its assets. Um, I look forward to Mr. Frost's clarification on these comments. And for my last point, I'd like to illustrate the committee, for the committee, the benefit of maintaining the successful local partnership in managing the Pearson Air Museum. Compare the difference in the photos that you all have on your desk. The first is Fort Vancouver's East Barracks, which has been for years managed by the Park Service. They're boarded and shut. Compare that to the museum when it was still under the trust management. Um, this, is, this is why this, at a time when we need these public-private partnerships, we need those funds um, to operate, as you can clearly see from the illustrations. Mr. Chairman, my legislation is supported by the City of Vancouver, virtually every citizen, civic, and community organization in our region. The Save Pearson Air Museum Facebook page now has more than 1,300 1, likes. Dozens have gathered in protest of the current situation, and my office has been flooded with pleas by my constituents to pass this legislation. I urge the committee to support this bill, and I ask that you help us preserve the treasures of Fort Vancouver. Thank you, and I yield back.